Okay, Commissioner Zuber, would you call the roll, please? Certainly, Commissioner Bennett. Here. Commissioner Eggenberger. Here. Commissioner Angle. Here. Commissioner Zuber here and Chairman Green. I am here. I don't and think my mic was on. Whoops. Community planner, Jeff Goulet. And welcome to you all. Welcome to everybody on the, on the uh, commission. Uh, tonight we have a pretty healthy ag agenda of six items, three of which are public hearings. Um, I'll just get this out of the way. When, when we go through the public hearings, um, if you do get up to speak, we ask that you at some point in time fill out one of our forms and when you speak, give your name and address and then um, briefly state what you're thinking. It's very simple and we do invite you to do that um, at the appropriate time um, and we'll call for that. Um, let's see. We have minutes from our last meeting of May 7th. Do I hear a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Support. Okay, we've got a motion to accept the minutes of May 7th by Commissioner Engel and support by Commissioner Zuber. Any further discussion? Voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, our agenda tonight, again, has six items on it. Is there anything late from the uh, planning staff? No, sir. Anything from the commission to add? No. Hearing none, seeing none, do I hear a motion to accept tonight's agenda? So moved. Support. Second. Right. We've got a motion by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Engel to accept the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, our first uh, item tonight is a public hearing for supreme detailing. Uh, we're considering a special land use for automobile service station on property which is located on the west side of Rhonda Drive and south of Joy. Jeff, could you give us more detail? Yes, this is a proposed use that requires a special land use in our light industrial zone located at 8755 Ronda Drive. This is a multi-tenant industrial building, south side of Joy, west side of Ronda Drive. Uh, the layout of the site is uh, up on the screen before you. Uh, they're taking over the suite up in the upper uh, right-hand corner of that kind of U-shaped building. Uh, the automobile service uses require special land use because the Planning Commission needs to evaluate the scale and scope of the businesses, look at whether or not they need outside storage for vehicles, those type of, of things. Uh, Supreme Detailing was in a location up on Joy Road until recently that had a special land use for the entire complex for auto service type uses. Uh, so they didn't realize they needed a special land use when they moved into this building. Essentially what they do is detail work and uh, 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 equipment installation, like equipment on our police cars and other vehicles, aftermarket equipment they install. So they don't really do any you know, heavy repair or any of those type of things. All of the uh, uh, you know, cars are kept indoors. They don't store any of the cars in the parking lot. So you bring your car that day, they take care of it, you pick it up. So uh, it's a fairly light use in this particular location. There's, there should be plenty of parking for pick up and drop off. There's service areas around the back to get the cars in and out of the of the service bays. Uh, the, the, uh, the Hensleys are here today to answer any questions you have about the use. Uh, they provided a fairly detailed uh, report uh, in response to the criteria in terms of explaining what the scale and scope of their business <coughs> is. Uh, staff feels that this is an appropriate use for the location and would recommend approval. Thank you, Jeff. Do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. <clears throat> Okay, we've got a motion to open the public hearing uh, by Commissioner Zuber and support by uh, uh, Commissioner Eggenberger. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, is there a project sponsor that, uh, okay. Did, was there anything that you'd like to add to what Jeff? Why don't you go ahead and go up to the podium? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Welcome. How are you? Thanks. Yeah. I think Jeff pretty much covered yeah, the majority covered of it. Covered the bases. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and introduce okay. yourself? Yes. I'm Eric Williams, representative of Supreme Detailing. Tina Hensley, owner of Supreme Detailing. Okay. Uh, Jeff is, oh, okay. There's a, it's not coming across on the microphone as much as I thought it would be, but that's okay. All right. Um, welcome again. Um, any questions, concerns, comments from the audience? Anything concerning this project? No questions? To no. close the public hearing. Support. All right, 
We've got a motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Engel. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we're going to start with the commission then. Any questions, concerns, comments? We're just going to open it up for anyone. It's pretty straightforward. Go ahead, Commissioner. Aye. So now why did you decide to move? Because your business is growing and... Landlord decided to double my rent at the other place that I've been at for 23 years. That'll do it. Yep. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> why do you, why do you like the market? Is are you? What is your business? I mean, you, are you busy all the time? 90% busy or busy all the time? Yep, busy all the time. And actually, it was a blessing because we do have more room over here than we did at our other location. Parking, or you're more in the front then? Is that where you, okay. Customers, they park in the front, and then we drive around the back, pull them in, and then clean them, and then they leave. You're welcome. Okay. Question. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, do you use any kind of industrial chemicals at all in the detailing process? Everything that we use is water-based, and then the city already has a previous list from when I was at my other location. They've got every chemical that we use. So you, you don't think it's going to impact the environment uh, and the surroundings? No. Nope. We've got a self-contained system. Okay. It's filtered, and then it's clean when it comes out. Thank you. Yep. Nothing goes down the drain. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I don't have any Questions problems with this. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Forward. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I would love to make a motion. I move to recommend approval of the request for special land use for automobile service for Supreme Detailing on parcel number 046-99-0003714, which is also known as 8755 Rhonda Drive, for automobile detailing and equipment installation as requested. Support. Okay, uh, we've got a motion by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Bennett. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay, Commissioner Zuber, would you call the vote, please? Certainly, Commissioner Bennett. Yes. Commissioner Eggenberger. Yes. Commissioner uh, Acharya. Yes. Commissioner Graham Hudak. Yes. Commissioner Engel. Yes. Commissioner Zuber. Yes, and Chairman Green. Yes. And uh, Jeff, what's their next step? This will be go to the Township Board on uh, June 26th for final approval. Okay. Thank you very much for coming before us tonight. Back on the Good 20th. luck to you. Back on the 26th or Sunday? Yes, I'll, send, I'll send you a letter. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, have a good night. Good luck in your new location. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we need to pull it out? Yes. I just wanted to bring something up that Laura was astute enough to notice. Apparently, I was not listed as a, attending the last meeting. And I read the minutes, but I didn't pay attention to whether my name was there or not. Oh, and okay. If, if your name wasn't there, you weren't there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, so we, we we'll have, have Connie. We'll have Connie correct the minutes. Okay. Do we need to do anything uh, under Robert's rules to formally? Yeah, change we'll, cor the we'll correct the minutes. Text. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So let it re be written. Yeah, it's it also in every motion. She's not listed as well. Okay. I thought you fell asleep right after we took the roll. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Real Just nice. kidding. Okay. All right. Our second agenda item tonight is the physical rehabilitation services, where we're considering a special land use uh, for a medical clinic. Uh, this property is located on the southwest corner of Ford and Lots Road, right across from the, the late Haydens. Um, <laughs> Woo -hoo. Anyway, um, Jeff, could you tell us more about that? Uh, yes, this is a request for special land use uh, within our corporate park overlay district. Everything in the corporate park overlay district requires a special land use. This is for uh, adaptive reuse of the Andy Pelk motorcycle uh, sales facility that's been closed for several years there at Ford and Lots Road. Uh, it's about 0.3 acres, fairly small site, limited amount of parking out front. Uh, the use is for a me you know, medical office for physical rehab services. Um, the owner of uh, Mr. Beatty's here tonight, uh, or his uh, uh, his office manager's here tonight, or a partner, to describe the business if you need to know more about it. Essentially, it's a low impact parking. You know, the, you know, the customers come, they get their serv rehab services, and they leave. So, essentially, it's just you know the, the two or three employees that are there during the day, and then two or three customers at a time. Uh, you, know, you know, there isn't 
basically they come as scheduled. There's very little overlap in the parking, so that's not going to be an issue. Uh, the site is in some need of improvement. They need to uh, revamp the landscaping, get some irrigation in, and take care of uh, getting the light back up in the, uh, the light pole back up in the parking lot and get a gate on the uh, trash enclosure in the back. Other than that, uh, he should be able to move right in and, and do what he needs to do. I, it's my understanding they don't need to do a whole lot to the inside other than you know, painted carpet and those kinds of things. It's basically it's an open you know, rehab center with equipment and, and stations and things for you know, physical therapy. So uh, the uh, project sponsor's here to answer any of your questions. Uh, staff feels it's a good reuse of the property, get the corner cleaned up, get a business back in that building. Uh, that'll be a, a good thing overall. So we'd recommend approval of the special land use for a medical clinic uh, at uh, 399 334 Road. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Okay. Got a motion to open the public hearing uh, by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Bennett. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, public hearing is open. Uh, would the project sponsor like to say a few words? I thank you for taking the time. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to and excited about um, moving a, a mile into uh, from Westland down into Canton at that very uh, perfect location for Let me us. Stop you for a minute. Who are you? Robert Beatty, the owner. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know we're we're ready to get started with the with the property, just as uh, Mr. Goulet said that uh, it okay. All right. perfect fit for us. So, so all right. And. Want to say Robert McCausland, IMAC Properties, we own a property. Uh, as you guys know, that building's been empty for a long time. And the reason being was we were real particular about the user. We had everybody from a gun shop to uh, a bakery want to come there, and I get calls every day. And it just wasn't the right fit till, till Rob came along, and uh, I looked at his situation, and we made a deal to where I think he'd be a real asset to the community. Okay. All right. If you'll uh, stand put, uh, see if we'll see from the audience if there's any questions, any concerns, comments, anything at all before we get to the commission. Move to close the public hearing. Support. All right. We've got a motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Bennett. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, again, open floor from the commission. Anything? Concerning this property, go ahead. Where are you located right now? Uh, we're just a little over a mile east into West Lancer over the bridge on Ford Road. What is the reason you want to move to Canton? Uh, truthfully, I've been looking at that facility for a long time, even before I opened my my original clinic there. But um, it's it's one of we need. The location's perfect access-wise for us um, for what we do, but. Um, the property where I'm at now, I've already exercised two of my options to go through those contracts and looking for something more freestanding. They went through some changes in that plaza. The ownership is of question, and I don't want to stay there when I can have such a great opportunity at that property. There's a lot of physical therapy places in Canton, so is that, do you know why? I mean, would Westland or Canton would be better It's just the building period? Because you guys are probably pretty busy also in Westland. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing on our side that developed. I know Westland's plans is to develop towards Canton this way anyway, and that's such a beautiful strip of Canton through that region that I think we're a perfect fit there from the neighborhoods that are both, you know, north and south of us, um, down Lots Road, and um, the existing base. You know, I've got like a decade's worth of patients I'm bringing with me. It's a pretty loyal crowd of people, so... Um, I just think it's a better it's a better fit for us. It always I think it always has been. I've always <laughs> our place that we have now is very pretty, but we're going to bring that same thing into Canton. Um, yeah. hmm? Anyone else? Uh, just a quick question: Are there any site uh, requirement differences in this use as opposed to the previous use? The previous use was a, a motorcycle showroom, so that's why it had limited parking because it was a showroom use, which makes it hard to reuse for retail and other uses. So the medical office in this particular use and what they're doing, he gave you information on what their parking needs are, so it's a good fit uh, for this use because there's no place else to put parking. You know, it's, it's a small site. It's pretty built, built out. 
there's not a whole lot else you can do with it without adding on to it. Lighting, anything require lighting, landscaping, anything like that? Well, the, the, the conditions are listed. Basically, we this is the original site plan for the dealership. It shows what the required landscaping was. So we just want them to restore to the original plan that was approved back in the, in the late 80s. So the DDA does have some landscaping at the corner and does have a landscape easement across the front that they maintain in front of the wall. Uh, but behind there, adjacent to the parking lot and along Lots Road is, up, is theirs to maintain. So they'll need to add some uh, irrigation and get the, as I mentioned before, get the lighting uh, put back in the parking lot. So. Down at this end? Yes. I have um, a concern about uh, being so close to the corner. Has anyone looked at, you know, making a left out of there? Driveway is the driveway. If you have to make a left out of there, you're going to have to wait till the left turn uh, queue at Lots Road clears. So, you know, basically during the day, other than rush hour, it shouldn't be too bad. <coughs> usually bad on weekends. It's usually during the day, not too bad. So, uh, we we talked about that. Uh, it's just a limitation of the site. There's nowhere else to get a driveway. So right, so. Um, because it's a private uh, driveway. I'm guessing you you probably couldn't do like right turn only. I know that's not ideal, being so well, close to Ford Road. They'll be but. able to turn left if they can turn left and get into the uh, left turn queue there, or 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 merge over into the right turn lane. So that's just is what it is. So. That's why I, I would never ever want a corner parcel because it's hard to get in and out of. But uh, uh, you know, most of the time during their most business hours is not peak hours. Right. So. Okay. Any other comments from the commission? I'd like Do to I make hear a motion? motion. Okay. I move to recommend approval of the request <clears throat> for special land use on parcel number zero four nine 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 zero zero zero. I'm sorry. 0016005, which is also known as 39933 Ford Road, for a medical clinic for physical rehabilitation services, subject to restoration of the site to the previously approved site plan, including landscaping, parking lot lighting, and addition of irrigation of the landscaped areas and provision of a gate on the trash enclosure. Support. All right, we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Engel. Any further comments uh, from the commission on this motion? Um, Commissioner Zuber, would you call the vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Bennett? Yes. Commissioner Eggenberger? Yes. Commissioner Acharya? Yes. Commissioner Graham Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Zuber? Yes. And Chairman Green? Yes. And their next up is... The Township Board on 626. 26. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Look forward mm -hmm. to it. All right, our third agenda item of the evening is <coughs> the Hampton Manor of Canton, where we're considering a preliminary PDD, Plan Development District. Uh, this property is located on the south side of Ford Road, uh, west of Ridge. Jeff, could you tell us more? Yes, this is a request for preliminary plan development approval for Hampton Manor of Canton Assisted Living Facility. Uh, the proposals uh, located on 7.29 acres on the south side of Ford Road and west of Ridge Road. It actually consists of two parcels, one off of Ridge and a larger portion of the property on Ford. Uh, the gentleman selling the property has a house on Ridge that he's going to retain. You can see that on the, the plan, which is that white area on the right-hand side of the property. The south part of the rest of that uh, parcel goes all the way back. It'll, mostly it'll be used for stormwater detention, which is north of the stormwater system for uh, West Ridge Estates. Uh, they're off of Ridge Road. So the proposal is for a 64-unit assisted living facility and a 59,000-square-foot building. Uh, the uh, definite benefits include provision of a sidewalk along the north side of Ford Road in front of our parks. We can get access and connection from the subdivision to the park on the north side, uh, since they can't make that connection, since they don't control the property on the south, they've agreed to uh, propose that uh, to provide better access on the north side to get from Ridge Road all the way over to the subdivision uh, west of the park. So that'll provide good access to the park. Uh, the provision of tr uh, transport van for residents, enhancement of the wetland buffers by supplementing the planting and removal of debris and non-native plants, uh, they've got over 68% open space, they exceed, uh, which exceeds the 25% minimum, and they provided additional parking for visitors over and beyond what the minimum requirements are 
uh, plus they've agreed to you know update and upgrade their architectural uh, you know materials and things on the building so the layout in front of you is a conceptual layout of the, of the plan the uh, you know, you've got all of the traffic analysis and market analysis in your packet I won't go through that in detail they're far enough west of the intersection that their traffic won't be directly impacted by uh, the backups at the intersection. Uh, we've confirmed with MDOT that MDOT is completing. Uh, we basically sent their traffic evaluation to MDOT. Uh, MDOT is completing an evaluation for left turn phase analysis at Ridge and Ford Road. They're completing that. So basically this uh, confirmed what we already knew at that intersection, but they have, uh, they have no impact at that intersection relative to any uh, uh, you know, creating any additional impacts or deficiencies at that intersection. And that's going to have to take care of that one on their own. Uh, so, you know, with that, I will, uh, you know, turn it over to the uh, project sponsors to explain more of what they're doing. Evan Priest is here as their engineer. Uh, Mr. Imran is here, who's the uh, owner of the facility, and they can explain to you a little bit more about what they do, uh, you know, and, and how they're going to operate. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sam Martin. I'm one of the owners. Um, Hampton Manor, we're a premier assisted living facility. We did a lot of market analysis, a lot of market research as far as what the senior citizens, especially in this area, need is really a premier assisted living. Um, we really want to enhance their lives, um, do whatever we possibly can to make sure that they're living their life to the fullest. So we try to do whatever we possibly can to spoil them. Um, inside the building, we have movie theaters, we have beauty salons. Um, we have a chef that cooks the meals, three uh, meals a day. Several activities throughout the day, from entertainment, from people coming in and playing music, uh, Bible studies, church services, that sort of thing. So everything's kind of right there. Um, if they get to a point where they can't make it to the doctor's office, we actually have physicians that can come into the building. So we do whatever we possibly can to make sure we're taking their life as enhancing as much as we possibly can. Oh, it's a lot of features. A lot of features. Where do and I probably sign? Probably lots I haven't thought of or <laughs> that didn't speak of it quite yet. So, yeah, where do I sign? <laughs> um, I, I uh, did not get a, a motion to open the public hearing yet. Oh, want to do that? Motion to open, move to open the public hearing. All right, I've got a motion to open the public hearing on this project uh, by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Eggenberger. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. If, for interrupting you. Do you have One any more to, to add? Okay. All right. From the from the uh, audience, anything? Any comments, concerns, questions? Anything at all? Come on up. Don't be shy. Nothing. I have, uh, one letter from the adjacent yes. resident that we provided you. Uh, I've discussed uh, the project with him several times. Uh, I think Evan can address some of his issues, you know, relative to some of the issues with utilities on his property. The area is fairly wet. You can see there's a lot of regulated wetlands on the property. The adjacent property owner also has some regulated wetlands. He's still on well and septic. I think um, the project sponsor is willing to, you know, work, you know, with the, the neighbor. You know, if he needs to be connected to sewer, you know, they'll probably work, you know, during the engineering phase to get him a sewer lead, those kinds of things. One of his issues was getting around with access around to the back of his house. I think there's been a gentleman's agreement from the existing owner, Mr. Drabicki, over the years that he can go on his property just to get around. And I'm sure they can make arrangements to allow him to use the driveways on this site to get around to the back of his house if he needs to. So they can work that out at a later date, but I think they're willing to work with him to make sure that the existing property owner is, is not impacted. So. Um. We went to the audience and there were no comments. We have the one letter. Um, do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. All right, we've got a motion to close the public, public hearing by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Eggenberger. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, from the commission, any um, qualms, concerns, questions, what have you? Go ahead. It's it's open night. Open mic night. Open mic night. Yeah. Can you tell me where else Hampton Manor is? You said you you have a couple, right? Correct. Yep, we have several throughout Michigan. Um, our latest build was in um, Davison, uh, Bay City, Saginaw. So we have we have several throughout. So. All private pay only. 
Well, we are, but um, some of our buildings we can take the waiver program, but the waiver program, they're getting tougher for us to want to sign up with. So we are going to look at it in this area to see if that's the case, but for the most part it is private pay, but there is a long-term care insurance that if they do have that policy that that pays a good chunk of it. And we also take veterans benefits. Our buildings are fully licensed, so since we're fully licensed we can take those benefits. I mean, many of our residents who are going into senior care, they private pay, as you know, until their money is spent down. And then what happens? I mean, you know, they have to end up on Medicaid or some kind of assistance. Do you require them to stay there for a certain amount, like two years must be private pay before they can get in? Is this like a high-end facility only? Well, usually what we do, we do a market analysis as far as what the, what the other competition is um, being paid. And we usually we're a lot lower than what they are. So, but our amenities are a lot nicer. So because we're not a corporation, we can help them out on pay. We can work with them on an individual basis. If we meet with a family and they can only afford X, we will work with them and we will make sure that that's all they pay. What is the market for private pay? Um, on that area, it probably averages around about $4,600 a month. So, yeah. Um, could you please tell me, all right, so... So you said the one of the side next to it is a house? Is that what? Okay. Yeah. Off to the... Is that the email that we received from that man? Yeah. It's actually two houses next to them. So the, the letter you have is from the, the gentleman that's directly adjacent to it, which is uh, right here. So. A lot of drainage issues. Is this going to improve that? But he's got regulated wetlands in the back of his property, too. I mean, it's an old house. It's been there forever. He's on well and septic system. There haven't been any improvements to the site in over a year. Basically, this was basically an open field for a lot, a lot of years. And, uh, you know, if anything, the, the improvements on this site will probably help drainage. Evan can address some of the issues that he brought up in his letter. So yeah, I think some of the uh, some of the drainage ends up on his property and we'll be directing that drainage into our detention system which will go uh, down in the southeast and end up in that in the county drain there rather than going on his property so hopefully that'll improve his situation in that regard uh, what happens Jeff when it, it we do a building something like this and it makes the neighbors worse the drain they can't our ordinance doesn't allow, our ordinance says they can't make their situation worse. They have to maintain or improve the situation. So if there's, so as Evan says, there's natural stormwater that's running from this property onto the neighbor's property. So they have to collect that and pick it up and take it to the detention system. They can't allow that, that stormwater to continue to run across this property. So they're gonna, in this particular case, that situation will improve. So you can't necessarily disrupt the natural flow of water, but they can improve it and, and redirect it if it's causing a problem with the adjacent neighbor. So ordinance basically requires basically, you know, no net impact, you know, from, from a stormwater regulation. One thing we also run into are, are, are transport services for seniors, because what we have for Canton, it stops at 5 o'clock and soon to be 5.30, but so do you guys um, in your other facilities, have, how long have you had transportation systems? We'll have our we'll have a bus for this building here so they'll have their own bus so usually if they want to go to like bingos um, at their church if they want to go to like casino nights uh, color changing tours um, visiting different areas and seeing the Christmas lights so we'll take them on different trips that way too. shopping trips sometimes they just like going to Myers and walking around and that's okay we'll get them on the bus and we can do that too so yeah. hours I'm just trying to figure out what we have for seniors oh really okay because Myers is open 24 hours, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they are the boss. So if they want to do something, we're going to do it. So that's how the rules and regulations come up. So if, when I meet with families, they ask me a question like, do you allow this or this? I look at their mom and their dad. I'm like, I don't know. Would you allow that? And they're like, yeah, that would be great. And I'm like, there's your answer. So, Jeff, we have a lot of um, issues with our, we're looking at like our transportation for emergency services with all the seniors assisted living centers, you know, it's really reaching a limit. Do we know what our limit is, the amount of facilities that we're going to? Well, I mean, our limit's going to be what the market demands. I mean, essentially, if you remember when Bickford came through a few months ago, in their market study, and as well as this market study showed that Canton is underserved when it comes to senior facilities. As our community ages, you know, Canton may have to make an investment and and additional ambulances or ambulance service, you know, to serve these facilities as the demand for emergency services increases. 
uh, I mean, every facility is a little bit different in terms of what level of care <coughs> they provide, you know, how, how ambulatory they are, and, you know, I mean, this, isn't not a, this is not a nursing home. You know, it's a, an assisted living facility. So these generally are people that are, for the most part, fairly healthy. They just can't do everything by themselves anymore, and they need, they can't live by themselves. But that doesn't mean they're not, you know, that they're not, they're not bedridden and they're not sick. Uh, so the number of, of uh, you know, of, of transports we have to these facilities is not as much as we're going to have to Siena Healthcare or to some of the rehab facilities where people just came out of the hospital. Those kinds of things. I mean, this is a permanent home for these people once they move in here. So, so w whether or not they're in an assisted living facility or whether they're in the home, either the ambulance is going to the home to pick them up or it's going to the assisted living facility. So if they're a resident of Canton and they need additional care, that run's going to happen irregardless. So. You have to strike a balance, though. So maybe before the next meeting on this, we could find out where we are with that before we have to make an investment for more emergency services. And I, and I think uh, uh, Christopher Stockline, who probably has a good uh, handle on that, can you know that they, you, you may ultimately need a study session with the board on that in terms of what their you know what their projected need is based on the demographics. Uh, that may be part of their accreditation in terms of their evaluation relative to emergency services. So. Public presentations, and we were, were that's most of our runs are to facilities like this. So, if maybe we could get a report from him again. Okay. I have a question um, for the future uh, because of the fact that our population is growing older, right? Um, is there, I mean, you're landlocked here, there's really no room for expansion. Is that something that is of concern to you in this location? No, um, you know, we, we try keeping it a home-like type of a feel. We don't want someone to walk into our buildings and make it feel like a, a, a facility or an institution. We want them to feel home-like. So we want that kind of home-like feel. We don't really want it big and overwhelming. Unfortunately, in that situation, people age in place and then they go on hospice and they pass. So. Unfortunately, it's kind of a revolving door, right? You know, right. it never gets to a point where, you know, of course, that's why we're here is because we see the need for it in Canton. So, but we, we, we really wouldn't want to expand even if we had the property. We want a home lake type of a feel. Gotcha. Okay. I'm sure, and the people to the east would ultimately want to sell <laughs> if they wanted well, to do to expand. I know, but that's not, but while you're on that subject, right. I wanted to, to ask you should this get approved? and we get to the site plan phase, right? Would they be um, amply buffered by landscaping and well, You et cetera, can see the conceptual landscape plan here. So, I mean, there is a, you know, what they're doing is because there's a lot of wetlands along the property, they're going to enhance the wetlands with some additional vegetation to get some understory placed back in those wetland areas. But up front where the parking lot is, that's where the wetland is not, and that's where the house is. So have a standard berm there with evergreens you know, to buffer the house from the parking lot, just like we do for any other non-residential okay. site. All right. And, and uh, because obviously this is going to have, have full facilities and we're right adjacent to, um, you know, septic tank, et cetera, et cetera, will they have the option of tapping into the... Evan you know, mentioned to me before the meeting, he'll be glad to work with the neighbor on making sure they're accommodated if they need to connect to public sewer or public water. But they won't be forced into it. It, it will no, be their choice. That's right. between the two of them. We can't force them, but if their septic system right. fails and he connects to sewer, you know, I'm surprised the septic system hasn't failed already. So, I mean, it's pretty wet. Um, well, I'm always concerned yeah. with onerous development that causes someone else uh, too well, much. We've got, a, well, we've got a commitment from the owners to help them out if they need help, you know, with public utilities. So. Okay. All right, those are the only concerns I had. Oh, no, I'm sorry, there's one more. Um, you talked about that, that homey feel. I was looking at your elevations, um, particularly the, the west elevation. It's very, very plain. Um, is there, you know, if, if we get to the site plan issue, is there anything we can do to kind of like liven that, that elevation up? I mean, how about some more fake dormers? Um, I'm just trying to throw some ideas out there. It, it looks very institutional, and I know that you just said that you wanted to get away from the institutional uh, uh, feel, 
When our buildings are done, they're beautiful. Um, they really have a beautiful look to them. It is a very home-like feel. It's kind of hard to tell with the drawing. I know, it's a, it, for the but rendering. Our buildings are beautiful, you know, and we want to make sure we accommodate the needs of Canton, whatever type of materials you would like us to use. Usually we go over beyond that anyway, so with lots of stone and so forth. And we actually bring that feel inside as well, too. So if we have stone and so forth on the outer pillars, uh, we bring that into the fireplaces, we bring that in. Uh, we bring in uh, natural granites around that kind of enhance that as well too. So we really bring a home-like type of a feel to it. So Yeah, I was, I was just uh, hoping that maybe, partic particularly like the south side of the west elevation there, um, it just needs to be broken up more in terms of uh, that it'll long pop. run of... Trust me, it, when it gets done, you'll be okay. impressed. It'll pop, okay. unfortunately. Uh, this I'm holding you to that pretty, if we get that well, far. Please do, do okay. so. so. I guarantee you I'll, I'll meet or beat your expectations. Okay. North side looks looks good, but it's a, it's a that's a smaller. Um, smaller and this run. is a this is a preliminary PDD, so the final PDD will be back, so they'll have more details as they flesh out the design of the project. I understand. Okay. All right. Anything else from the commission? Yes. yes go ahead. So we had a facility like this probably two months ago. I think it was on Denton Road, and we. They, Pickford he, on Canton Center. Yes, he wanted to switch it, though, from assisted living to apartments, remember? What facility was that? It was near Cherry Hill Village, and he said because his market study showed that they couldn't do... Uh, they, we, we moved from an a, a independent living senior apartments to regular apartments. That was uptown. That wasn't, that wasn't assisted living. Was it just in that area that senior housing wasn't needed? I mean, it, well, they provide senior housing in their first level apartments for somebody. I mean, remember you, you discussed how many seniors that they lease to. So the, the project that Best Tech had in Uptown was a concierge, high-end, independent living seniors. Okay. That, that particular product couldn't be marketed in Canton because of the, basically the cost, and they couldn't get financing for it because of the of that, that didn't have anything to do with assisted living. That was an independent living facility, but it was a concierge, uh, you know, type facility. And so they just went back to their original PDD approval, which was standard apartments. They do rent to seniors in those apartments who are still, you know, not needing assisted living. Uh, and they have, the, you know, they have at grade accessible apartments within those. So that's kind of a whole different type of project. Okay, so, so it's because it was high end is why the market didn't support that. Right, because it was, yeah, the, the, that particular concept, yeah, was, was a very different concept. They had all of their meals basically cooked for them. You know, they had a personal chef. They had, you know, you know a lot of personal services, even though it was, it was independent living, but it was pro provided a lot of personal services. So, um, but uh, so that, that was a different type of project. Um, I have two questions for you, sir. Uh, one is, what's you, we're talking about a 64-unit uh, facility right now. So, uh, does that mean there'll be about the maximum capacity would be 64 people living there? Um, we can also accommodate like husband and wives. So we'll be actually licensed for uh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but there we have quite a few apartments that can accommodate husband and wives. Um, so I believe it'll be, I think it's around 72 or 74. We can accommodate, but that doesn't really happen too often, you know, so. So in, uh, by your experience in the other facilities that you have, you know, what, what is the percentage of uh, seniors that come to, you know, uh, live in this area, locals, and how many of them usually come from outside, you know, just in a ballpark? Most of the time, it's, it's probably 98% local. You know, and, and what kind of happens is when one or two people move in, they talk to their church members and they talk to their friends, and next thing you know, they're having card parties and all their friends are there, and that's kind of how it works. So it's, it's like open up a country club. You know, everybody wants to have their friends at that country club, and it's, you know, that's what we're trying to create of a country club type of a feel, and they're so excited, they tell their friends, and everybody kind of knows everybody. It's kind of neat. You, you walk down the hallway when people are doing tours or reading the doors, and they're like, oh my gosh, I went to school with this person. I know that person, you know? And so it's really pretty neat, so. Jeff, there's a question for you. Sure. So right now, when we, suppose we go ahead and, you know, give consent and they go ahead and build it, and for some reason, this facility does not do well, and they have to shut shop. Then what happens to the liability to the 
to the neighbor who has a concern, you know, what, what happens, who takes care of his drainage problem? Well, I mean, his property is going to be his property, and whatever, you know, he's, you know, whatever happens to the facility, just like anything that's built, you know, always has the, you know, potential of, of, of not doing well. I don't know that there's much uh, chance of that unless the whole company goes belly up and then it would be sold and, and retrofitted. I mean, um, I mean, basically, he's going to have his landscaping buffer put in. He's going to have any drainage and utility things taken care of adjacent to his property. So, I mean, the only difference is, is he's going to either have a, you know, a property next door that's operating or not operating, you know, for a period of time. So I'm not sure how to answer that, but we've never had a, a senior facility in Canton go under. Um, that generally doesn't happen. They're not going to get funding for the facility if there's no market for it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Anything else from the commission? Nothing down there? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend preliminary approval of the plan development on the parcel number 06999-002-000 and part of the parcel of 06999-0003-000 for Hampton Manor of Canton Assisted Living. Sorry. Support. Okay, we've got uh, a motion by Commissioner Engel and support by Commissioner Zuber. Any further discussion? from the commission on this motion. Hearing none, seeing none. Commissioner Zuber, would you call the vote, please? Certainly. Commissioner Acharya? No. Commissioner Graham Hudek? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Bennett? Yes. Commissioner Eggenberger? Yes. Commissioner Zuber, yes. And Chairman Green? Yes. Uh, motion carries. And uh, their next step would be what, Jeff? Uh, to the board on the 26th. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Our next agenda item is the Ridge, uh, where we are considering a, a final site plan approval for property which is located on the east side of Ridge and south of Cherry Hill. Jeff, could you, can you give us more detail on that? Uh, yes. Uh, you've previously seen the first two phases of River Hill, or uh, the uh, River Hill Ridge at Cherry Hill Village. Those are the two Pulte uh, sections. Uh, Mr. Very retained the uh, eight acres here, which was the rest of the Halk property on Ridge Road. Let me get to the map here. It has kind of a strange configuration. It kind of wraps around an existing house uh, on Ridge Road. Property also includes property on the west side of Ridge Road, but that's not included as part of the site plan approval. That'll be done as simple splits on the west side of Ridge Road. So essentially, the final site plan includes 31 units uh, within this development. It uh, has connection off, uh, you know, main access from Payne Street off of Ridge Road and up Revere Street. It also connects to the end of Grant Street within Cherry Hill Village. The main difference between this and the preliminary plan is due to some utility conflicts they had uh, on the north end. They've decided to uh, cul-de-sac the road at the north end uh, that will actually be a better traffic condition on Ridge Road and prevent uh, uh, some conflicts there relative to passing and turning on Ridge Road at that particular uh, point since we'll have some driveways for existing houses or new houses on the other side of the street. What's kind of unique about this and what we encouraged when the plan development came through, because this is the beginning of the historic district, we wanted to, as, as you came into the village, we wanted to make sure the historic fabric of the village was maintained by having the houses face onto Ridge Road. So part of what's happened over the past year or so is, is the township has been working with the county to get this portion of Ridge Road reclassified from a county primary to a local so that the county will allow driveways out onto Ridge Road. So the county's only going to allow four splits on the west side, uh, and then there's, I think, seven lots on the east side uh, of Ridge Road. So these lots are wider. Uh, they're 110 feet, 90 to 110 feet wide uh, along Ridge Road, so they're much wider than the typical 55-foot wide lots within the, the village itself in this particular area. Plus, so when you come into the village, you know, you'll have a standard driveway coming out to Ridge Road with houses that facing Ridge Road, just like the other houses that are in the historic district already face Ridge Road. Uh, so, that, so when you actually come into the village, you'll feel like you're entering the village, you know, rather than looking at backs of houses. So that'll be uh, a nice kind of 
conclusion to this last little piece of this portion of Cherry Hill Village as, as we develop out uh, you know, this section and making sure it's, uh, its context is appropriate. Uh, one of the things Mr. Vary is doing, there's a little park area that exists in Cherry Hill Village right now on the north side of Grant. He has a park area just to the north of that within this development too. So he's going to combine those areas, complete those, irrigate it, and make it available so that both associations could take advantage and in, in use of that. And his association, uh, which will be a separate condominium association, will irrigate that and pay to maintain it, you know, rather than having it you know, try to figure out who's responsible for what area. Uh, he also has some uh, park area to the north, and he'll have a connection through that park area to Ridge Road so people can, can walk out onto Ridge Road. Uh, there'll be a continuous sidewalk along Ridge Road. We'll have street trees along the inside of the sidewalk along Ridge Road, so we'll get uh, some streetscaping along that section. So it'll be treated like any other subdivision. Ridge Road will be treated like any other uh, local subdivision street, e essentially. Uh, let me just bring up the plan. Uh, so this is a final site plan. They've got a couple of things to finish up with engineering and an escrow agreement to complete before it goes to the township board. But from all other practical purposes, the, the plan is ready for construction. And uh, Danny, would you like to get up and say anything about the project? Here's the color rendering showing the cul-de-sac, uh, the connection and the, the, the park area at Payne and uh, and uh, Revere, and there's another park area up here behind the existing house with the sidewalk that runs south of the house through the uh, park area internally to the portion of the development. You'll see that the, the yellow, so everything in yellow are, would be the new lots. Uh, everything in the light green would be the park areas and common space. So Jeff, 25 to 31, those will have driveways onto Ridge? 25 through 31, yeah, those will have direct driveways out onto Ridge. The rest of them will get in on Revere Street? That's correct. So, and then on this parcel on the north, on the parcel on the west side up here, there'll be four parcels ultimately done with a simple split. Uh, so there'll be four, but that's not part of this site plan. That'll be done as a simple split on the other side. Because that's all the county would allow on that side of the road, I believe. So, Danny, do you have anything more to say? <clears throat> I can say that, uh, that Jeff and I worked an awful long time on this little eight acres, probably more than we ever did in the hundred and some that we did in the village. I really like the way it turned out. We had, uh, we actually had county approval on our exit on Dunn Ridge Road. And then we had some issues with, uh, well, my biggest issue was we had to build it for a 45 mile an hour road and it was getting reduced down to 25. It would, is going to happen here real soon. It's been about a year and a half in the process. But then we had utility pole issues. We had, it was just one thing after another. And Jeff and I sat and discussed about creating the only cul-de-sac in the village, even though it's not Cherry Hill Village. And uh, I talked to Ali at the county, and he was loved it. Loved the fact that we didn't have another cut on a ridge road. So it, it put us a little bit behind on the engineering. Like Jeff said, we got a couple cleanups. We should have our, at least our approval letter within the next week or so um, from the county. We already have sewer, water, and soil erosion. The, uh, the financial guarantees went in the mail today. So Jeff and Mark will probably receive those either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but we're anxious to get this finished up. And uh, You originally had where the cul-de-sac is to go out to Ridge Road. It originally went out to Ridge Road. Canceled. Yeah. And, and the, one of the, the, actually, one of the concerns for the Cherry Hill Village residents was creating more through traffic to Grant Street. So one resident that I talked to last week, uh, at least, liked the fact that it terminated. So it would basically cause their traffic to go out to, pain, to down Revere and to Payne and prevent a lot of cut through traffic uh, to the end of Grant. Um, so there's only basically 20 lots that are on that internal road, uh, you know, north of uh, Grant Street. And so it's, 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 it's fairly limited in terms of who will use that section of road. Um, so in order for them to you, uh, if you have one of those, was it 24, 24 lots in there? Uh, you have to come in elsewhere. You have to come in from so, what? We'll come Coolidge? in down here in River Hill Ridge, which is only one block in, and come up Revere Street. So, so this is all part of River Hill Ridge. So you would come in. Whoops! You would come in just south. 
See lot one just to the south? That's the first lot in River Hill Ridge. So Payne oh, Street I see. comes okay. in. Yeah, Payne comes in just south of you know, lot one through four there. Or you have to come in. all the way up from, um, from Coolidge. And make your way down, down Grant Street, right? Okay. So, so essentially Payne Street is their entrance. Gotcha. So. Okay. Um, what, what reason was there for the west not being designed laid out at this point? That 25 mile an hour issue. I mean, to keep it as simple as possible, as the county basically said, because uh, at one time this was two separate parcels. There was no right of way for Ridge Road, believe it or not. Uh, well, there was, I should say, I'm speaking incorrectly. Statutory. There was no, uh, uh, I'm going to say it was an easement, but I know I'm using the wrong term. So the county basically asked us to minimize the driveway cuts on the west side. Um, in turn, them, the township, myself, all wanted it to go to 25. It was, like I said, I took more time on this I, than I, I did I the four phases of Cherry Hill, or five oh. phases of Cherry Hill that we yeah. did. The county has a rule on a county primary. If you do a subdivision or site condo, they, it requires access internally to that development only, not <coughs> direct access to a county primary. So we worked with the county and they agreed to with, I think we're trying to make Sheldon Road south of Michigan a primary. They didn't want that because it added miles to the primary. So we took advantage of the fact that this was about the same length of road. So basically what we did with the county and the state is we flipped what was primary and what was considered a local road. So essentially that's the only way that the county would do 25 miles per hour here. That, that the only way they could do it was, was treated as a local kind of subdivision road. Uh, to get it to a 25 mile hour speed limit. We're still waiting on the final letter from that, so he will not be able to get permits on those lots until right. we get that. One of the things about those lots too is they're in the historic district. So one of the things that's in the agreement is Danny has to go through the historic district commission on all the lots that face on Ridge Road to get architectural approval of those homes. So just like the two that are being built on Cherry Hill Road, those, both those two lots that he bought from the township a while back that are being built now on the south side of Cherry Hill on those corners, those had to go through uh, some architectural review with the HDC. So, so we'll make sure with that we get, you know, a variety of styles and to make sure that all of the, uh, uh, you know, the house designs and porches and things are done correctly, you know, and, and that are- How far south will the 25 mile an hour limit begin? Uh, I think it goes down to the River Hill Ridge entrance. Yeah, so. I think it's just past, uh, there's a second entrance, right? No, no, that's Haines, the only yeah, entrance. Just, just to, south of, just to the south of Payne Street. So, because I think it's 40 miles per hour as you come around okay. the curve. And then as you come up the curve, then basically it's, you know, it's basically uh, prima facie, you know, 45 miles per hour. So this is the last little puzzle piece in this area that'll be glad to, to, to get finished up, so. Anything else from the commission? I mean. I yeah. have something. So as sad as I am that my dead end on Grant Street will come to an end, I, um, I do like the, the setup of it. Um, I think anywhere that you have a straightaway in Cherry Hill Village, it becomes kind of a more of a 35 mile an hour zone, which is, is scary um, considering there, a lot of us have kids on Grant Street. So I do like the fact that it's going to um, you know, head down Revere to Payne. Um, one question I have for you, Danny, will Bro Homes be building any of these or just Livonia Builders? No, we're going to do the same like we did with Cherry Hill, with the village. It'll be both of us. Yeah. I just do all the development for us. Okay. Okay. That's it? Okay. Commissioner Graham Hudak. So the reason they're going down to 45 is just because of the residential area, this increased residential area then, right? Well, right now it's 45 miles per hour because that's what it is and it's considered a county primary. So the state basically on a county primary, the state, uh, uh, you know, ba state police basically sets the speed limit. So in order to change it from 45 to something else, they have to have justification based on what the average speeds are. You know, it's an 80 percentile kind of thing, average speeds to set the speed limit. So the only way the county then has control over setting a speed limit is if it's a local road. So through the state police, we know we'd never be able to justify a lower speed limit. So the only way to get the speed limit down and get it to a village speed limit like the rest of Cherry Hill is, uh, is to treat it as a local road. So, so it has to be classified as a local instead of a primary to do that. A lot of traffic there now. 
So that's a good reason to slow it down. So <laughs> I mean, and they're not going to, but they don't want to put driveway cuts because they want to slow it down. Well, I mean, I mean, there's there's not going to be that many driveway cuts. I mean, you have the existing houses there that have driveway cuts already. But as a county primary, the rule is by the county you cannot have driveways directly out onto a county primary. So that was the whole design issue that we were going back and forth on, is is how do we accomplish getting the houses facing to Ridge Road with the driveways out to Ridge Road like they all of the rest of the older houses on Ridge Road are already doing left turn lane there they're going to do a study there's a bypass lane at Payne so Payne Street already has a bypass lane so the county already required that well they're not adding another entrance onto Ridge Road so the county will evaluate each driveway as they come in as part of a driveway permit process so we're not going to have the friction point up at the entrance I think they required a bypass and diesel lane when you were bringing uh, Revere Street out to Ridge Road. So that's no longer gonna be necessary. So that'll get rid of a friction point or a, or a turning issue there. So, so it'd be sure. So as it is right now is as it will remain. Just the speed limit will change. And ultimately 11 driveways. Yeah, well we're removing one house so it'd be 10 additional okay. to it. What, what, uh, what is there? It'd just be like Hanford Road, so. Salts or and um, do we know, uh, I know that you said that uh, those on Ridge are going to have to go before the Historic Commission, but do we know generally what the houses are going to look like? I think Danny has a wide complement of houses he built in the latter phases of Cherry Hill Village. I think you had how many different models and how many different uh, elevations? I want to say there was eight models and four or five elevations for each home. We're, we're basically You're carrying, following the same pattern. Yeah, we're carrying right, oops, right over what we did. Gotcha. Except for those on Ridge, which is those will be, those will different. be different. They'll be more of an estate style, even though they're on Ridge, but they're a bigger lot. You know, they'll be a bigger size home. Same with the ones on the other side, because those are all walkouts up to the river back there. Those will be really nice once we get the barns out. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. I move to recommend approval of the final site plan for the Ridge Site Condominium, also known as Phase 3 of River Hill Ridge at Cherry Hill Village, located on part of parcel number 0749900815 and part of parcel number 0749900110710. as proposed. Don't fight over the support now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a motion by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commission, Commissioner Eggenberger. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, seeing none. Commissioner Zuber, would you call the vote, please? Certainly. Commissioner Bennett? Yes. Commissioner Eggenberger? Yes. Commissioner Acharya? Yes. Commissioner Graham Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Zuber? Yes. And Chairman Green? Yes. Okay, and the next phase for? We'll proceed on to the Township Board, hopefully on the 26th if he gets his uh, final county approvals. So. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Our next uh, agenda item is the towns at Cherry Hill, where we're considering a site plan approval for property on the south side of Cherry Hill Road and west of Denton. Jeff, could you give us more? Uh, yes, uh, this is the site plan for the plan development uh, district you reviewed for the towns at Cherry Hill by MI Homes last month. Um, proposed site plan consists of 93 residential townhomes and 16 buildings on 8.37 acres. Uh, plans are generally consistent with the Cherry Hill Village Overlay District and the plan development agreement approved by the township on May 22nd. Uh, the project provides a transition from the commercial office uses on the north side of Cherry Hill to the single family condominiums being constructed by MI within the corners uh, adjacent to and south of the development. So essentially they've taken care of all of the issues that we had with the preliminary site plan. Uh, they've added some additional detailing to the sides of the buildings to add more windows and uh, kind of balcony type uh, you know, elements to the sides of the buildings. Uh, they've uh, you know, finished up the streetscape plan which includes uh, you know, the, the lighting, the landscaping, all of those kinds of things that we normally see along that section of Cherry Hill Road along with the uh, stamped, uh, stamped brick 
uh, area adjacent to the uh, the on street parking uh, the uh, you know the landscaping in between the buildings and in front of the buildings has been modified to make sure it's scaled right to the area that the, the landscaping is fitting in uh, other than that it's pretty much uh, you know in final form compared to what you saw uh, last month uh, it's been engineered with all the utilities from a preliminary standpoint and is uh, you know, we would recommend approval of the site plan at this time. All right, thank you, Jeff. You know, all of the residents were notified that the site plan would be considered by the Planning uh, Commission tonight, so I hand-stuffed all of the envelopes to make sure every single house got their notification. Um, and uh, we did have several residents that came in and looked at the plans before the meeting. Diligence done. Okay, um, we're gonna start down, down here. Commissioner Acharya? Do you have any comments or concerns? All right, Commissioner Graham Hudak. My only question, Jeff, is the, the traffic study. Did Wayne County say anything about the traffic study that accompanied this? We've sent that on to them. We'll, we'll work with their traffic division to optimize the traffic, traffic signal, so. Wrangle? Commissioner Zuber. Um, as I said last time, I actually think this looks pretty nice, so I'm, I'm eager to see it built. Commissioner Eggenberger? Uh, no questions, thank you. Commissioner Bennett? No, no questions. Satisfied as well. Do I hear a motion on this project? Sure. I move to recommend approval of the proposed site plan for the towns at Cherry Hill Condominium on parcels number 073-9900057187 and 073-9900107 subject to minor adjustments to the landscape plan for buildings six and seven and clarification of the pavement cross sections on the plan prior to review and approval by the township board. The board. We've actually received those and so they're ready for the board. So those changes have been made, so. Okay, all right, I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Zuber and support by Commissioner Bennett. Any further discussion? Commissioner Zuber, would you call the vote please? Sure, Commissioner Bennett? Yes. Commissioner Eigenberger? Commissioner Acharya? Yes. Commissioner Graham Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Zuber, yes. And Chairman Green? Yes. So the fourth. And the next step for that one is Jeff. Jeff? Oh, you're looking it up. Item is item oh. number six. No, no. Uh, where, okay, this goes to the board next. Yeah, 626, 26. Um, busy meeting, okay. so. All right, thank you. Our sixth agenda item for the evening, the TNT Fireworks seasonal sales. Uh, we're considering seasonal sales uh, permit approval for uh, use of the property at Meyer, uh, located south of Ford Road, east of Canton Center. Uh, Jeff, could you tell us more? Uh, yes, this is a... Uh uh, request for seasonal sales permit for firework sales and the uh, parking lot at Meyer there in the uh, area where it was uh, last year. Uh, they require compliance permits from the building services prior to erection of the tent and the perimeter fencing. Uh, we had some issues with them last year relative to the tent uh, erectors and things. Uh, Rob spent a lot of time with them last year, so we, they've been made aware of those issues and hopefully we won't have the same issue relative to set up this year. Uh, Ms. Wilson is here to represent the item. If you have any questions about uh, what they're proposing to do, essentially they're going to set up uh, by June 23rd and be done, you know, soon after the July 4th. So. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Oh, good evening. Um, thank you, Jeff. Too. I appreciate all your help. My name is Jill, and I'm with TNT Fireworks. Um, as Mr. Glaze said, we did have some issues last year regarding the tent. It was a f um, a pole tent that was required to be staked in the parking lot. Um, typically our tent companies stake, you know, two stakes on each corner, on each pole. Um, Canton Township, you guys required three, so we had to get the tent company back out there to stay, put the third stake in. Um, and then we had some issues with like our sidewalls because of the flooding. Um, all of that has changed in a sense. Nothing's changed as far as location. We are using a frame tent this year that will be weighted um, with 350 pound weights. We also have an eight foot white fence that will go around the tent as a perimeter and that was um, suggested last year by the building official as well, so. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna start down at this 
start down at this end. Commissioner Bennett. Uh, no questions. I thought it was pretty straightforward. So. All right, Commissioner Zuber. I can't think of anything. All set. Commissioner Ingham, all set. Commissioner Budek. Commissioner Acharya. No questions, please. All right. All right, I, I don't have any uh, issues either other than don't sell them to my neighbors. I don't want to yeah, hear, really. I don't want to <laughs> hassle to my, you know, with my dogs and stuff. No, but you want them to buy from TNT fireworks because I promise you, like, we don't sell any other type of fireworks, just TNT, and we are big on safety. So uh, I promise if your neighbors not, are going to buy safety, them. It's not safety, it's the noise. It's the I know, noise. So I know. Could you, could you, like, ask everybody where they live, and <laughs> if they say... Uh, I, I won't say my subdivision, but I'll make sell, sure not to give out your address, though. I you mean, just sell dog ear worse. mufflers along with the yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thunder jackets. Um, I move to approve the thirty, the one thirty-day se seasonal sales permit for the TNT Fireworks Company in the Meyer parking lot, parcel number zero five eight nine nine zero 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 three seven two zero commencing on June 23rd as shown on the plans and subject to obtaining appropriate permits and inspections from building for erection of the tent and placement of perimeter fencing. Support. That was a long sentence. Yeah, for 30 <laughs> days. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not 30 days that we will be out there, but I understand your permitting is 30 days. Yeah. I have a motion by Commissioner Zuber and support by who, who supported? Oh, Commissioner Engel. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I think we'd do a voice vote on that. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. All right. All right. We have uh, staff referral of one item. Boy, you guys are going to have, have a light, uh, light work here, right? Only one item? Anyway, Uptown Apartments Phase 4, we're sending to staff. Uh, do I hear a motion to do that? So moved. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, anything uh, else to discuss? No, there is no public hearing scheduled for next month. We do have one site plan that uh, we're in the process of. They need a variance next week, but they'll be a, it's an addition to the clubhouse for Canterbury Muse. Right now, that's all we've got for you, unless Uptown comes back in and is ready. So. Good. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Or, so okay. moved. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you so much, folks. Appreciate you. <laughs>